time with what are the advantages of continuing on, you know, and you know where you're going right now, or doing something different. And usually, what happens when people get to that junction in the road is because what they're doing isn't working very well for them. You know, and that's that's the junction in the road. In other words, do I do I stay on this course or I do something different at this point in time? And um, so it, it it takes time, I think, to kind of work through this with individuals that uh, that I bump into that have this this issue. In terms of okay, what are the issues you're bumping into right now? You know, why aren't we being successful, or why aren't you sort of like loving what you're doing? Let's say necessarily, and what are the other options that you've got that might be different than this? And then there's a third option, at least a third option, and that is it's very possible to stay on course with what you're doing, but maybe is there a way to do it differently where you get different results? But whatever decision you come to, in other words, to stay on course but do something differently. Or stay on course and don't do anything differently and just continue to be miserable. Or do something entirely different, which we'd have to investigate and kind of find out, does that make sense or not? It's like whenever you make that choice, you know, to move forward on on one of these possible options you've got, that you also have to promise yourself that you will look back on this time when you've made your decision based upon as many facts as we could gather that you will never look back and regret that. You have to promise yourself you'll never regret that. That you will go on with whatever direction you're choosing at 100%. Because there's always a tendency to look back when you hit a rough road on the choice you made and kind of go, wow, geez, I wonder what would have happened if I would have went the other way. The only thing I'll guarantee people is, no matter which choice you choose, that there's going to be some rough road ahead no matter what. You know, and... And the only thing that you find, you know, when you hit that rough road, again, is maybe another decision point. It's time to make another decision about what you're going to be doing, as opposed to go back and think back, oh, I wish I would have done something different. It's a waste of time to even think about that in a lot of ways. Yeah, because so it's you about, can't go back. Well, you can't go back. Yeah. I, mean, you, I mean, if you can learn from that, that's wonderful, but you can't go back in time and do it all over again. So you really have to sort of I guess, make that promise, you know, that I'll never go back and regret what I did because I actually made some effort to take a look at the facts, you know, of which choice I was going to make. And then the other piece that I will bring in as well, Dave, we talked about how how we in, in, in my business, I'll consult with other people to, you know, keep my energy level up, you know, that sort of thing as well. I also have them talk to other people about that decision making and I use a, an idea called triangulation you know which is something that we used to use back in the military with maps and compasses and stuff like that that if if you were lost and you had a map you had a compass and you could locate where you were on that map by, by finding three major geographical areas around you you know then that's triangulating yourself you know exactly where you're on the map that's the way GPS works right now too by the way through triangulation with satellites. And so I say find three people, you know, who you trust and would give you feedback and make you work a little harder on digging into the facts, not to tell you what to do, but to encourage you to look even further, maybe answer this question, maybe even thought about this, and maybe you should think about that, you know, to get more information that you can sort of like put together in terms of, of uh, pros and cons about what direction you've got. So bounce it off of three people. No more, no less. If it's more, you'll have too much information, you can't process the information. And if you only check out it with one other person, uh, sometimes that person might be trying to give you their opinion or maybe their advice, and you're not looking for advice. You're looking for a different kind of help. And then the last thing is, once you've got things all lined up in terms of which direction you think you'd like to go, then let your intuition kick in. We all have that. Does that choice feel right? Or even though it, the facts might point you in that direction, uh, there's there's something about that that just doesn't fit. You have to listen to your intuition as well. Even guys have that, so you have to listen to it, you know? Yeah, and I think that's connected to um, that perspective. Because Clearly. If, if you don't have that perspective of who you are and what you can do, you're just listening to a bunch of 
voices of things you wish you were or you're afraid you aren't uh, in your head, all those voices. You've got to turn the other ones off, the stories we tell each other. And intuition, peop, you know, people say it's from the gut. This is what I did. Um, what's your gut say? Well, we'll all say, we'll answer to that, but sometimes it's what we fear the most or what we want the most. You know, it's it may not actually be our intuition. It is much harder to connect with than, than we think. And that's why I think those two things you've talked about here are... A, a tremendous foundation for yeah. you know for anyone yeah. in you know in any line of work you know you're you're making decisions you're trying to improve excel uh, and so forth um, let me ask you about um, self esteem because it's not the same as self confidence as you know i've learned it it's it's different um, what about self esteem where does that come into play yeah, it's I've got self concept and self esteem kind of together, you know. There and self concept is really, I mean, how do you conceptualize yourself? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a good person? Do you see yourself as a tall person, a sharp person, you know, slender, obese, smart, not so smart, good looking, not so good looking? I mean, how do you conceptualize yourself if if you have somebody describe yourself? If uh, I've actually had people do this exercise, Dave, where well, I'll throw a bunch of magazines out on the floor and stuff like that and some um, scissors and some glue and blank paper. And I said, okay, I want you to make a mask, you know, of the person that you want other people to see. So use these magazines and just cut out, you know, pictures or words or symbols or something like that and make a collage, make a mask that you want to kind of like show people, you know, who you are. And, um, of course, you see, you know, strong and tough, and you see athletes, and you see smart, you see, you know, different pictures that they've cut out and pasted, you know, basically on this piece of paper. And that's basically, you know, kind of their, their mask. You know, that's, that's um, sort of how they want other people to conceptualize them. And we'll talk about that. Then I'll say, okay, now we're going to work on the inside mask. You know, so now what I want you to do is cut out pictures and symbols and numbers and something like that that really shows what it looks like from the inside. You know, what other people don't necessarily see, but what you see. And that ends up being how you conceptualize yourself. And then the self-esteem piece ends up being, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about the picture you see on the inside of that mask? So it's a very interesting, a very interesting exercise, Dave. You know, in terms of what they want other people to see that outside mask, but then what's the backside of that mask look like, you know, to them, and how do they feel about that? And that opens up so many opportunities to be helpful to people. It's incredible when you see the inside mask. Yeah, and it, this takes me. I, the reason I brought this up, I will never forget um, my first experience at age ten of. Um, you know, higher level sports, and it was trying out for a, a travel team. And I remember the coach telling everyone, "You gotta get cocky. You gotta be cocky." And they wanted big, big swagger all over the place. And I didn't make that team, and I know why because I didn't fit that mix. Yeah. And yeah. and I remember even almost retreating because I didn't want to be a part of that because it was such an act and the, I was raised by a guy who was a tremendous athlete and he never bragged about anything. <laughs> the whole point yeah. was, no, go hit the ball, go chase it, there you go, good job. I mean, he was always happy about things, but it was, no, you, there's just no need to ever do that. You you have fun and either you did it or you didn't and you try again or whatever it is. But this was a, you know, it was a coach that was demanding um, people be something that they might not be. And I think that's where, you know, ah, show some confidence out there. Come on. show, And then they'll start saying, don't you have any self-esteem? And well, yeah, maybe I don't feel <laughs> like the person you're trying to get me to. Why is that? Um, yeah. And I, I think that is um, that's a big issue with high school sports because they're becoming yeah. complicated people, and it's all about the facade. Yeah, yeah. Well, interesting enough, the last couple of games we played, you know, we we lost 
uh, an important game. Uh, I mean, all the games are important, but I mean, it, you get toward the end of the season, and and they have different consequences for winning or losing. So we we lost um, an important game. It was very interesting to see how these um, older boys reacted to that, um, because we'd been, we'd been working on character and, and class and language and behavior and I mean all that kind of stuff. And when we lost that important game, you know, um, all the things we talked about in terms of character and class and stuff like that, it was like they just disintegrated. And we saw some behavior and uh, some verbal activity that surprised us. And uh, we talked about it. I mean, literally, we talked about that for the next three days at practice. And, um, you know, then we, and I said, we want you to remember how you felt. You know, how did that feel when you lost? And how did you react to that when you lost? Well, then, three days later, we won um, a big game that put us into the state tournament. And, of course, the way they acted was classy and with character and, you know, heads up and on and on and on. And so then we talk about that. What is the difference between how you react to being successful and how you react when you're not successful. And we're saying, you know, that we have to teach you both of these things while we're here. You know, that that the closer we can come to being the same in terms of how we respond to success and failure, you know, then we can make some progress here for you young men because you're going to need that later on in life when you're done playing soccer. Absolutely. In relationships, in work, you know, in all of that kind of stuff. So, um, and and... And we have those same discussions, Dave, with these high school kids, with college kids, with Olympic athletes and professional athletes, because it just seems to be something that is characteristically missing from sport these days versus, let's say, 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 50 years ago. Well, and I can tell you, it's, I think it's, I, it's either missing or it's being overshadowed and pushed away, just interfered with, with all the... There's just so much activity going on in everybody's lives because I see it in the workplace with some really smart, dedicated people. But you'll see when you know something goes wrong towards a deadline, it's just what you mentioned, that somewhere a different person shows up in the office for those next yeah. 45 minutes versus yeah. when things are, you know, they may not be going too much better, but for some reason they've got a grip on it because, you know, they can see a victory, you know, by, okay, we'll still get this done by the end of the day. And, you know, that's, those are 35, 45, 55 year old people. And I, yeah. um, that's why it's so critical. And I, I want to, um, uh, get to the desserts and talk about one thing here, which I think really kind of blends in with these other, which is you talk about dealing with fear by being fearless. And, again, that's one of those double-edged swords where you can't just tell somebody, get rid of your fears. That's about the scariest command I've ever been given, you know. If, yeah. <laughs> But talk about that. Yeah. Dave, before we move down to desserts, can I talk about one more thing that will fit up oh, in the entree section absolutely. of the psychology piece? Absolutely. Okay. And, and those are, I guess, some of the major issues that I'm seeing kind of from in, in the psychology area. <clears throat> you know, one, we're seeing more depressed mood you know, now than what we've seen before. We're seeing more anxiety than what we've seen before. And when I say before, I'm really taking a look at two specific time frames that I was working with college athletes. And one was when I was with Washington State University uh, for 10 years from uh, 89 to 99. So just, just primarily with uh, college athletes, although I was doing some work, you know, with Olympic winter sports as well. And then I moved from there into the Olympic world, <clears throat> and then I was dealing with older athletes primarily. I mean, there's some high school athletes for sure, but the athletes that we had at the training center were primarily in their 20s. And so now I'm working with just Olympic athletes and not student athletes. You know, for 10 years, uh, from 99 to 2009, <clears throat> then I left the Olympic Committee <clears throat> in uh, 2009, went to the University of Washington for two years and the University of Virginia. And so I'd been gone, I'd been gone from uh, the uh, NCAA sports for 10 years. 
And when I came back and was reintroduced to um, uh, collegiate sports 